Hello and welcome back everyone to another video and in this one we'll go through installing Windows 11 on any ARM64 system ready ES or SR hardware. Uh, for this purpose today I'm using the Honeycomb and that has UEFI with ACPI so that this goes for anything that's near that spectrum of system readiness. Um, so we've had a few methods because we need to skip TPM check. Uh, and also we don't have ready uh, Windows 11 ISOs or Windows 10 ISOs for ARM64. We have to do a bit more legwork to get Windows 11 up and installed. There are multiple methods to do it with registry edits and, you know, other things. But uh, the one that I'm going to show today is the most streamlined that I have found. So what we need is we need a Windows 10 ISO and a Windows 11 ISO and then we'll just replace the Windows 10 install.esd with Windows 11's install.esd and that's the magic ticket. So let's get started. So uh, you go to uupdump.net and uh, that's a perfectly great website to that gives you scripts to download to sort of generate ISOs in your local system and you can run this on Windows, Linux or Mac. So first we need Windows 10. So we'll go to latest public release and click on ARM64 and then we need Windows 11. So we'll go to latest beta channel build and click on ARM64. So as you can see here on the latest um, stable pu public release, we get the Windows 10 feature update. And on the latest uh, beta channel build, we have the Windows 11 inside a preview right here. Um, so let's download the script for Windows 10 first, and then we'll do the same with Windows 11. For Windows 10, just select your language is English, can change to whatever you want. Uh, I usually just select Windows Pro uh, and then uh, download and add additional things. Uh, I use Windows Pro for workstation that sort of negates a bit of a you know consumer windows issues we have uh, with updates and all but still uh so include windows updates this does not work if you are doing it on linux if you're running the, these commands on windows you can run that um so we just need the last three things the run component cleanup and integrate dot net framework is not necessary uh, what is necessary is use, so use solid ESD compression because this will make sure that your compressed file size is below 4 gigabytes, which is necessary because we are going to use a FAT32 formatted USB drive for U for U-boot to uh, for UEFI to recognize it and load and and run the EFI uh, boot. And so yeah, that's it. So you just select these options and click create download package and that should show up here. Select your folder and from there you can go ahead. Save that there and then same with Windows 11. I usually just select the exact same options as we do with uh, Windows 10. Just for parity and uh, create download package as well so all of those get saved there so here i am in that directory you can see i have both the packages um this one i don't know why it added a one in front of it and this one so what we'll go ahead and do is extract those you can use whatever you want um command line or not i'm just used to kde so you know, saves me a bunch of time. So extract here and auto detect uh, subfolder. That's what I use with KD. Um, that done. And you can see the folders are created. Um, so we'll do it parallelly. We have the terminal divided into two. So uh, first I'll start the ISO creation for Windows 10. Uh, so just to keep in mind the 19 043 build is for Windows 10 so we'll cd into that and then just run bash and uh, there should be a script called uup download linux.sh run that and same here but this time we have uh, build as 22000 so this is Windows 11 so we cd into that and then run the uh, script called uup download linux.sh and this will take 
a, a fair bit of time depending upon uh, what your download speeds are and mm -hmm. till then what we can do is actually prepare our usb drive since it's windows and everything has to be the microsoft way the iso um creation isn't uh the the iso if you directly dd the iso it's not the same thing it creates a weird udp um disk format instead of iso um thing and um doesn't really work anywhere not on x86 not on arm so we need to take our usb drive and format it as fat32 under gpt um nothing fancy just use either use fdisk or use gui like i do it's the same thing so we go here we click format we select gpt we format as that and then we add a new partition uh, select fat and click create and that's all it is um and done so that's all we need to do here Let's wait for the ISO creation to complete and then we can move on from there. All right, now that the ISOs have been created, we can open up our file manager or you know, do it on command line as you feel right. Um, so first we go on to the Windows 10 folder and here you can see the 1904.1 underscore multi underscore arm 64 underscore n dash us dot ISO is our bootable Windows 10 ISO disk for arm 64. We right click on this and we mount it um, uh, from there uh, all we have to do is copy all of the contents of the disk onto our newly formatted usb drive which is right here so paste all of these items and wait for the copying to finish all right now that the copy is done uh, we go back to where our windows builds were and we go now into the windows 11 folder um so 22000 and then arm 64.iso and we mount this same way open that up go into the sources folder and search for install.esd so here it is install.esd it should be a 3.2 gig file copy this over onto your usb drive and replace it in the sources folder uh, with the one that was from the Windows 10 uh, install and overwrite that uh, That should take a few minutes and once that's done we are ready All right now that the copy is complete we can go ahead and remove the USB drive and insert it into the honeycomb All right now that I have it plugged into the honeycomb all I have to do is give it a good restart and enter into UEFI settings there we go go down to boot manager and select our USB drive now this should start a very familiar Windows install session um, it's it's a regular um, install on uh, of, of windows so click next select install now wait for things to load up and of course skip the product key and select uh, windows 11 pro for workstation that's what i use select next and this will show up your um, license agreement and custom install so um, this is specifically for honeycomb uh, the NVMe drives don't show up here so you do need a SATA drive uh, yeah drive zero or for me uh, click next and that should start the windows um, install
And there you go. That's Windows 11 uh, booting. Of course, all the setup is still remaining. So, you know, let's just quickly go through all of that. Uh, and yeah. So another thing to note, as you will see in a second, is that the onboard networking doesn't work. The onboard networking has started to work now on Linux. Now that things are, you know, finally upstreaming um at a still at a slower space uh pace um on the cpi side but things are happening um people are working hard on it so right now on windows that's still not working so onboard networking isn't a thing you can add usb dongles usb wi-fi i just don't have anything connected right now so i'll just uh you know continue continue with the limited setup and we'll try from there They should just have an option for I'm um, installing on a test device and I don't care about any of this. But nope, I have to go through all of this every time I set up. Okay. Don't care about any of those things. And there you have it. <laughs> That's uh, Windows 11 running on the Honeycomb. So let's quickly get, you know, do the about system thing and see what's what. Um, so yeah, Cortex A72 at 2 gigahertz, 64 gigs of memory and um, Windows 11 Pro. And here are all the 16 cores there you go so yep there it is uh windows 11 on a cortex a72 hardware and it's working fine uh, of course there's no graphic acceleration because amd doesn't have arm 64 drivers for windows neither there's nvidia um so the ui is a bit choppy and you know if you have something that's heavy um on the graphics side of things it will load up the cpu more and slow everything down apart from that things are working fine um all our memory is de detected or drives are detected um and we have things running as things should be running now with 11, Windows 11, there's a bit of a caveat. Um, it might not always be supported if they add a TPM check always on boot, that might be a bit harder to circumvent. And then if later they decide that they don't want to compile for ARM V8.0, they actually want to compile from ARM V8.2 to, you know, address performance improvements and um, hardware improvements in, in newer Windows and ARM devices, then it would completely stop working on a Cortex A72 because Cortex A72 is ARM V8.0 and not V8.2 or V8.4, whatever. Um, so there's a bit of a caveat if you want to run Windows 11. Apart, apart from that, currently it was, seems to be working fine. Um, and thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and hope this was helpful. Bye.